Hey, what's going on guys? It is Spot the Aussie here for the season finale of season number three where we were just crowned the European champions. And I do have a medal here in one of my recent cases. So we are now the European champions. I don't even know what that was. But anyway, we are the European champions. So now, after winning the championship, this is all about the pre-season up to season four. And of course, I'm going to pick... Well, because we came first, we get the option to... Uh, go up to the World Championship Series, and of course I'm going to pick that. We'll get, we're definitely going to be fighting above our belt. I mean, in the Asian Series, realistically, we were fighting above our belt anyway. Now we're going to be like, you know, uh, so small that you would class us as like a midget team fighting below the... I don't know. But the, the point is... Um, this is the preseason testing video where, you know, we're going to have some interview questions based on morale. They're going to give us the money. Then we're going to have to decide how much money we want to spend in terms of, you know, improving the car. That's why we've been budgeting for a long time now leading into this season. Not designing new parts at the end of season three so we could um, start with a bit of cash in our pockets from the get-go. Anyway, so here's World Sports Network who's asked us that was a great win for Enrique Lara. I, I, I think that's an error because Enrique Lara didn't win, wasn't it not, um, uh, tsh, Party, Party won that race, I don't know what that is, we'll just, we'll just go along with it, um, uh, uh, uh Tiago Panin struggled finishing down at first, I mean, sure, um, I think there's a bit of a glitch here because... We just won the championship. I don't know what's happened. This is like a glitch. If you're a developer and you're now watching this video, uh, th this is an official glitch report that Tiervo came first and is now being told that he struggled from an interviewer. Um, it was a great drive. He's good. Not that I'm really worried because everyone's morale is up plus like 20, 30 because of, you know, we won that championship. So we have 8.7 mil in our pocket now. Um, uh, we're going to have, I, I think the championship winning this season was like $38 million, something like that. Plus we budget as well for every race. And because we set a low budget at 636, that works out to be 11 races season, like 6.3. Plus I think I might've budgeted medium for the first couple of rounds. So we can actually see that budget is going to be. 6.7 million dollars so we're gonna have 50 million dollars plus the 38 mil that we won from taking out the championship so let's carry on and we already signed up our two drivers we renewed their contracts we didn't have to pay a signing on fee so that's pretty much all sorted that's sweet and one thing i want to check and this is what i said to you guys as to why the reason i signed these guys on for another season is that they were paid drivers now Pay driver, it says that in special conditions, the driver sponsors will pay £439,000 for each race they're involved in. Now, I'm pretty sure if we automatically go up to the next tier, that money is going to increase. That's why I renewed the contract before we won that championship one race before, because if I can lock her in at, you know, a million dollars and the pay drivers for almost half of that, if that's going to increase like 700, 800,000, we're literally paying her a hundred thousand dollars a race really like that's going to be huge savings and our first race in the championship for uh there's some lights but uh for um lara is um is going to be one of those it's going to be let's let's be honest our first season in the world championship is going to be a struggle if you have a look at the staff like let's compare the mechanics if you go to the world championship Look at all of them. Nearly five stars. Four and a half, four and a half, four and a half, four and a half. We're not near that at all. This is about consolidating our place in the World Championship, not coming last so we don't get demoted, maybe winning a couple of handful of points here or there, and then, you know, setting up for a good season after that. If we can win in our opening season in the World Championship Series, like, more power to us. The other thing to note is because we won the championship with our good friend Party. Party is now champion. He gets the personal trait of reigning Asia's uh, Pacific Super Cup champion. Traits, markability plus 30. And that's what we wanted. Morale plus 50, we didn't need it. Mechanic relationship plus 10. Chairman's happiness plus 10. Two, three or four of those traits we didn't need. But the markability, look what that's done. That's put his markability up to 93%. Sponsorship appeal is five stars of five. Race 
bonus sponsors. We are going to receive offers in the off season. So we've got four slots to fill. A lot of money to be made here. And that's why we've been holding off from signing up any sponsors. Or I should say that we timed it that they finish exactly on the last race of the season. So we've planned really well here. And um, there's no need to keep... We'll continue to scout drivers because there's no point not scouting them. But the point is... Um, we're in a really good position going into this championship. I'm not looking to, you know, turn over any staff just yet. Let's just see how they go for half of the season. If we have to kick them off, we'll kick them off. You know what? Looking at Reginald Bristow's contract, it might be worth having a bit of a peek. He's almost at four stars. Let's have a look. Unemployed line. Frederick Kelly. That'd be a trade-up, I believe. He's got a few bonuses. Two days. Risk level negative one. Let's um, approach the designer. He's interested. Let's just get something on the table just so we can um, start getting things on the way. And because he is five star potential, we can sign him up for 36 months. That wouldn't be too bad. We can lock him in for a full timer. Uh, signing on fee. He'd really like a nice signing on fee. 360. Qualifying bonus. Bonus size is important. So we're going to go like 6th. 70,000. Who knows? Bonus size is important again. Who knows what the going rate is, you know? It doesn't really give us a good comparison. Let's just get that out there. But more importantly, let's move on. The race car is complete in terms of repairing it. Not that it mattered. Okay, here we go. Race championship promotion. Now... Let's make sure prize money for the season received prize money. It's going to be 30.7 30 mil, actually. 30.7 mil comes in, so that gets us to 39 mil with, this, what was it, nearly 7 million in um, budgeting. So we're going to have, like, what, 46, 47,000, yeah, 47 million dollars up our sleeve. Manager of the season, after turning up the votes, manager of the season is Spot the Aussie, so we get manager of the season as well. Drive of the season is Tiever Party. So we pretty much got all the awards this season, which is uh, pretty amazing because that's what we wanted to do. We couldn't do that last season. For some reason, like our fifth drive, the fifth, the guy who came fifth won the award. That was really weird, but now we finally won it and we got the manager of the season, which is great. What do we want to do? Would you like to step up to the World Motorsport Championship? If you accept promotion, our technical expert shall brief you on your uh, blah, blah, blah. What do you say? The land of milk and honey awaits. Except, of course, we're going to accept. This is going to be our season. The world champ, which have been voted on the call, have now become active. This course may change. The rule changes for this year are removal of Sydney GP. That's bad. We wanted it. We love Sydney GP. 16 lap races on average. The rule changes for this year are 16 lap races on average. Okay, well, we don't really know what it was before starting in the World Championship, but that should be interesting. There are a lot of mid-season changes, but it looks like still end-of-season changes I should have a look at. How are we looking? Okay, we've got multiple sponsorship offers. we got, like, two for each slot. Two, three, two, three. Let's start having a look. First sponsor, five stars, one million up front, $600,000 as a qualifying and race bonus versus 450 we're immediately going to take that one million dollar and that's going to be a target position of seventh or above which might be achievable and 3.4 times at united kingdom are we going to the united kingdom anytime soon unfortunately not and there's no point delaying it because we only get it by that race but we want that money up front so i'm definitely going to sign them up hit that button it's another million dollars for our car. How are we looking? Ooh. Ooh. First place. That's not going to affect us. First place. No. So these are not great for us. Zero upfront payment. Nah. First place. Nah. And I don't want to sign on for that. Upfront payment of 200000 for second or above is horrible. So we're going to hold off there. What do we have here? Six races. Third or above. 1.5 mil payment up front. I think we'll take that for six races. It's a good offer. And I want to make sure that we have money for when we have to build the car. That's why I'm kind of jumping to some conclusions here. How are we looking right now? We have 11 races. 
four, yeah, five star, three rig spies and three up front payment, 450, 700, yeah, let's lock that in. 11 races this season, so that's going to be $700,000 extra in our pocket. Sign us up. That's how we roll. Now, now that we've officially turned over to the championship, let's have a look at those driver traits. Yes! Wow. 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 Okay, so the driver's sponsorship is now going to pay $974,000 if they race. Cost per race for Lara is 702. That means that Lara is actually going to be paying us to drive the car. Well, the sponsor's going to be paying us, but at the end of the day, we're going to be making more money off her. How was Tievo's part pay driver? $872,000. But it looks like his cost per race has gone up as well. How did that work? I can't quite remember what he was getting paid before. He might have gone up quite naturally. And that's just kind of been the difference of his deal going up. Hmm. So maybe that doesn't work how I expected it to work, like a bit of a glitch in the system. So she's gone up $400,000. I think this works out in our favor. Cost per race, 700. Six or above for qualifying, gonna pay us 974. Is that after the fact? I don't know. Let's just wait and see how that plays out. I'm curious to know. I'm gonna to have to rewind this video and have a look myself to, ha to specifically see if that's it. Otherwise, um, yeah, that's a very good thing to know. If you guys are gonna be playing the game uh, down the track, what are we looking at? He, Frederick, signing on fee. He's insulted by that? Really? Come on, dude. Okay, $600,000. All right, let's just see how he comes back with that. Now that we're in this championship, we can also start looking at staff from other teams. Because... Because we weren't in that league in the World Championship, none of the other engineers wanted to look at our team at all and it's really important that we get a very good lead designer even if we might be paying a little bit more than what we need so let's have a look clear selection who's number one let's just have it let's try with patty look at all the wow liability my percent for performance here's bonuses good components take no time to build He's interested to in start negotiations. Wages are important to him. He's on 625, 100,000 right now. So let's, he prefers if we pay it all, team pays it all. Let's just try even split. We're paying him a little bit more than what he's getting now. He'd like a nice signing on fee. Wow. Let's just try 1.1. We want to try and edge him out for as low as we possibly can. And as for qualifying bonus, 205,000 is his rate, but 205,000 of what? That could be of anything. That could be of coming like first or fifth or something, you know? So look, fourth and fourth. Let's make them high because I don't think that's achievable at the moment. Let's send it. Let's see who else we can start to talk to. Rachel Adams, very similar. Performance is up, reliability, risk level one. Max performance instantly upgraded. That's gonna be really good for us down the track. Start the chit chat with her now. Obviously you have to offer her more than what she's getting. Wow, so she is on the highest part of the, the the most amount of money we can offer in a contract because it won't let us offer anymore. Let's try to offer uh, just one under. Why aren't close? I prefer if you pay it all, even split. You can split it, don't worry about it. Like a nice signing on the feet. Fuck, 2.5 mil. I think the other guy might be a better option for us, you know? I'm just gonna chuck that out there. Let the, let the uh, bread crumbs pick it up. Who's in the lower tier for us? Well, Jim Harris offers nothing more than what Reginald does. Andrew Dawkins has a lot of uh, 
adds a random great component. But that could make it illegal, couldn't it? Risk level one. Yeah, let's try you. Let's try Andrew Dawkins. Brakes, front wing, suspension. Hmm. Not interested. Fair enough. Is there anyone else on the unemployed line who we could look at and say, well, you've got the potential? Not really. Such a big difference. What about APS? Chariot Motor Group. She must have been from the team that dropped down. Yeah, look at that contract. That's huge. Negative two days, 20 plus performance reliability, 60. That's only for qualifying, adds a random legendary component. Let's approach. Same with you, we can't go any higher. Because you're in a league lower than us, I think it's gonna cap what you get paid or what we can offer. Should we for a medium contract? Uh, let's try this. That's a nice signing fee, if I thought so myself. Let's go up. Seventh. I mean, you're not getting paid unless we're getting good results, right? So, let's try that. Is there anyone else? ABS, Jenny Whitehouse. No, there's such a big difference. Once you go below that, Esprit GP. What can you offer? Hmm. Hmm. Anyone in ERS? Hmm. A fellow Australian. Produce an additional part for no extra cost of time. Okay. Let's start. You're in the low leagues. So what can we possibly offer you? Let's see what you can come back with that. We'll go with... What do you prefer? A long contract? Well, I think you're going to be worth it, so... For an even split, uh, we'll try saying person pays all. First place qualifying bonus sign on fee. You'd like a nice sign on fee. Well, if the bonuses aren't that worth you, let's try that. Let's just see. The appeal of going for a much better team might grab your interest. I don't know. Could happen. ERS. Funnily enough, there seems to be... I was going to say there was more improved designers in the lower league, but that's not the case. Who else can we look at? Mm, there's no one really else there at the moment, eh? It's going to be able to offer us that extra little pep in the step. Scudiera Rossina. 25, takes some time to build. Let's try, not interested at all. Okay, Eric. Hmm. What would you like? Wow, your offer is a lot... Your wage is a lot less than everyone else that we've been dealing with. And your contract ends, so everything else is literally out the door, but you are at your peak. Um, yeah, look, I don't mind. Let's just move in split. All right, so we've got a lot of offers on the table. When is the contract for our staff member now? One month. Oh, wow. Reginald Bristow is not interested in renewing his contract. So we definitely have to get a new lead designer. That surprises me. I'm really shocked by that. We do pay him unders, but we could have paid him overs on a renewable contract. Maybe that's just his way of saying I'm out. Well, that's good to know if we can't renew it and we've just caught him out. So, yeah, anyway. Um, what are we looking at? How are we looking at the championship? Tenth car. I knew that was going to happen worse than the grid. 
8th best in drivers. That's such a big drop, isn't it? 8th best for headquarters. Staff is 10th. Sponsors is 3rd. Go figure. I have no idea. So we're going to struggle in this purely based on stats as well. Look at everything. It's down, 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 down. And we should start designing things. Do we not start designing the new car? When does that happen? Pre-season start. What else do we have? Does that mean if we start designing things now, they're still going to be with the same car? Is that what's the go? It doesn't look like it, does it? I think we're better off just rocking forward a little bit here. And seeing what the go is. That's how I'd consider it. Look at that. Average. Cancel. Am I completely wrong here in my thinking? That if we don't design... These components will not carry over in the new car? But they are going to? In that case, are we better off waiting for our new lead design before we start designing parts so they start off better anyway? I think we are. Okay, let's just go like that. Proof components. What is going on right now? We have no... You know, this is your new car. F this is what you have to improve to shit. What is happening? Welcome back, and by welcome back, I mean... I've got some explaining to do because I am literally changing the future of this game as I'm speaking. So what had happened was I continued on with the current video that you're seeing and got the car developed and then completed round one. But there's been a new patch since that happened. And the new patch stipulates that when the car is designed and developed, the proper stats of the car should now be reflected, whereas previously, when you started in a, 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 the design of a new car, especially in a new tier, it would be completely rubbish. And the fix is that your lead designer's main attributes are now accounted for as part of that design. And that means, for example, now that we're with Reginald Bristow, um, the base stat of the car will be 14 times 2, so it'd be 28. So if the, if the engine was 200, it would start on 228. That's because of the lead designer. Now, in the gameplay videos that I was doing, what I found was that these offers will get rejected and eventually I'll end up signing up Paul Trenoworth. Uh, Trenoworth, yeah, the Australian, which is what I'm going to continue to do anyway. But I've gone back here... And I'm going to test this to see what actually happens. And if I like the fact of what had actually happened, like if it fixes the game to some degree, I'm then going to commence Season 4 with the new design. But I'm ultimately going to, you know, stay with the design of the car that I had and everything else. It's purely just a, um, a, a, a history thing where I've had to go, go back and load a game that's saved. You will never know the difference, but I know the difference because I ended up completing it. Then I did race one and it was like, oh my God. What I've noticed when you enter the world championship, the difference between the cars and the drivers and everything else. And we were so underpowered, it wasn't even funny. I managed to get a sneaky ninth position, um, but that was with a lot of luck and a safety car and, you know, fixing around and stuff. But... We are about to design the car, so let's just continue on as if this was the stream, the timeline we were actually on. So we are going to start to design the car, but more importantly, one of the things I do want to talk to you about is the rules of the next season. Now, if we go here, this should be like an option, usually there's an option to check out the rules of the season. Um, Standings, current rules. So, I think earlier in, in this video that was recorded like two, three days ago, I ended up speaking about all the rules. But one of the most important rules is that there's a refueling ban 
Cars cannot refuel during the race. So you're given the ultimate load of fuel at the start of that race. And you can't add anything or subtract anything during the race. So it goes away from the strategic essence of having a manager. Because it's another part that we have to work with. You know, the lower fuel load at the start of the race, the faster the car will be. But the earlier you'll have to come into the pits, which means you'll have to undercut people. But anyway... I'll explain why this is really important in a minute. But anyway, we have to design next year's car with the budget that we have. So we're given the uh, budget that we'd save for um, in the prior race. So this is where we're at. And um, straight off the bat, what I'm going to say here is there is no point in us picking fuel efficiency for the car. See how we've got two different stats here? Fuel efficiency and improvability. And you'll find that improvability is like very strong and fuel efficiency is medium. Base stat is 32. It's 18 mil, which is a bit off these other options. But you're probably sitting there like, well, um, you know, I'd rather have a fuel efficient car. And that's what my thinking was as well. But now that we know how much of a difference it's going to make it's really important that we go you know base that modifier and then we can adjust the car like that these options these pedals down here allows us to adjust the car to work in our favor in do we want more tire wear do we want it to be more fuel efficient so for me if we can spend the money, even though it says stronger fuel efficiency, we can always wind that back anyway and favor whatever setup we want. So the thing that we want here is the base stat modifier of 35 plus to begin with, which is huge. Again, here's another option where we get to pick what we want. And if we go either way, it's going to give us different options to kind of balance the car out. See that? Wow, doesn't that make such a big difference? Um, 6.5 million. Who do you guys think we should be using? I mean, we've got Hammer, Masolt, Catano, Rossini, Steinman Performance, which is, you know, the number one team on the block. Now, this is tire wear and heating, which is going to be our um, top two estimated outputs. Now, we can make it... Mm, we can do that because um, it's weak tire heating. And I'll get to that in a second, tire wear, tire heating. This is another one where we can pick very strong to kind of counterbalance. Now, we can put only two and a half stars in fuel efficiency, but change the nose height of the car to stack it to tire wear, which is exactly what we want to do. And that's because, bum ba da bum, we don't refuel. So what's the point of having a more fuel efficient car? If you're going to turn to me and say, well, if it's more fuel efficient, you can run it in overtake mode for longer. But if you run the car in overtake mode, what happens is the engine and the gearbox reliability shortens much faster. So more importantly, we want to make sure um, or that that doesn't really bother me. So we can leave it in medium the whole time around. And we'll have to do that from the start to the finish of a race to make sure we're able to finish because they only give you the exact amount of laps in order for you to do it. So you can't just flick it on the whole time and then off. But if it was more fuel efficient, we could. But the important thing here is um, we base the stats in improvability, tire heating, and tire wear. So one of the things that is heavily underrated when I watch other people design their new car, and if I could just turn on the air conditioning, boom is the improvability rating. A lot of people misjudge that for what it actually is. Um, basically, a car chassis is um, is allocated a star rating, and each star is worth four points of performance. So when you design a new component, let's say if you're on five stars, and you design brakes, if it would be 250 by default, you would add four stars for every star so five stars so if it's you know 250 it would then be 270 already which is quite huge so you actually want to weigh up the improvability a lot more than what you think because if it's a long season which this is it's 15 rounds 
you're designing new components constantly to keep up with the higher tier teams. And as you're designing them, you're catching up to them faster than what they're catching you because the design of the of the base performance of that component goes much higher in a much quicker basis. So it's actually really handy to have that. So for example, if I had 3.25 stars, it would give me an upgrade of 13 that the next time I went up to the next component. So improvability is worth its weight in gold and it's actually a heavily overestimated or underestimated most ways to what it actually needs to do. So I'm just going to check these out. You can't just look at this and be like, um, yeah, 35, da, da, da. You actually really need to weigh up the pros and cons. Just because something is cheaper doesn't mean it's going to be better for you. Like I said, because fuel efficiency isn't a big component, I don't care if the fuel efficiency is strong, but the improvability is medium. If, you know, if I can end up doing that anyway where I'm throwing it more towards the tire wear so yeah it's it's such a hard thing to kind of weigh up because you do want to spend the money and we've got the money available but we also want to make sure that we're spending the money appropriately and that it's actually going to benefit the car so tire wear tire heating so many things to consider when you're doing this when I did my first season I remember you know, this isn't a big deal. Yeah, just get the stars up. Spend the most amount of money as you possibly can. You know, whatever. We'll, we'll have a good time anyway. And, um... Yeah. And what you'll also find is, when they're designing the new car, there'll be like a... Uh, an, an offer we found that you can spend 1.5 million dollars and you will get plus one star in this stat. Do you want it? And yeah, most of the time you do want it. So tire heating is the the tire heating is basically the stat that keeps the tire in the optimum range um, that you get the performance out of before they start to overinflate or overheat. So it's pretty important as well. Tire wear is the the duration of the tire itself, like it, you know, from a hundred percent down to like twenty five percent. The the lower it is, the faster it will degrade and once you hit 25 percent and under the tires are absolutely trashed like they are terrible but um i know in this championship as well we get to elect what tires we want at the start of the weekend so i'm not really worried about that so much it's just trying to get this combination right and making sure that everything that we need is actually going to be what we want and i'm just surprised at that So I can do that and I can have the improvability of the car in five stars, which would be huge. Fuel efficiency doesn't matter. So we're stacking the car for cheaper, for about 2.1 million cheaper to have a base stat modifier. Let's have a look. Engine is the most expensive part. Every engine is the base stat modifier. The best of these can give you an edge in the first few races. Mm. See, that's why I prefer to get more reliability and I've stacked the rear package. See how I can adjust that slider? Unfortunately, you can't see my cursor with the software I use, but I'm just adjusting that slider, which is pushing the rear wing out like that. And by doing that, it's adjusting the stats of the car. But that isn't such a bad window to be in. Where else do we want to have a look at? Strong, medium. See, everything's really bad for fuel supply. We've got Russian oil, which is strong and medium. Um, ba -ba -bum. And yeah, they don't really give us much of a range to choose from, do they? Look at that, $2 million and it increases an entire star. Fuel efficiency. That's how I'm going to run it. I'm going to run it like that. Very strong versus weak. Doesn't adjust a lot, does it? Gives it one whole star versus... You know what? I think we're going to do that. And put it more into the tire wear. And that improvability is just going to be underneath. Five stars. 
material. Hmm. I think that's what's going to work with our car. It's going to cost us 46.8 mil, which means we're going to have upside. And, uh, yeah, tire heating provability is going to be absolutely blasting tire wear and tire heating. If I can change the fuel efficiency down more to favor tire heating, I would do it. But there's nothing for it, really, is there. What will probably happen is we'll get offers to spend more money on it. In fact, I'm really counting on that. Actually, let's have another look. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. I think this is a good basis for our car to be in. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend that money, boom. And like that, it looks completely different now that we've lopsided it to have a bigger rear package. And the improvability is through the roof. Tire wear is gonna be three and a little bit stars. Tire heating is just under three. Fuel efficiency is just under three as well. So it's gonna be a little bit of a different setup and we're gonna get all of our different offers. Let's go back to the table. Nah, let's not. Don't worry about that. Jenny. No. Frederick. These guys are off their tables. Brake supply. Here we go. So. Oh, perfect. We've just received some interesting news from our brake supplier. They found some quite incredible gains in tire heating, which could really come in handy this season. Unfortunately, the technology is, ra is rather space age and it comes across for 2.5 mil, which is what we've saved up. We can plus one on the tire heating. Great. That's gonna put that tire heating window, where is the car? Up into three and a bit stars. So the only thing lacking is fuel efficiency, which again, I'm happy with. I'm happy that that's the case. So let's just keep rolling. What do we have mail-wise? Uh, Paul wants to go back to the drawing board. I can't remember what got him on the line. He was insulted by the offer of the bonus. So if we put it back to third, I believe, and we click, okay. Keep going. Okay, so Paul accepts the offer. We're going to sign him up. Uh, where is he? Where is he? <coughs> hmm, excuse me. It's a bit of a big hit. We're going to go into a negative deficit for a little bit, but that's okay. And we just want to retract these offers because if something ever happens down the line, we don't want them to be completely like, ah, oh, you wasted all our time, even though they're going to say that anyway. But, um, yeah. So we're just getting on with the season. All the little nitty gritties. The big question is, is there going to be a, an additional offer to improve our car? Car improvability. Now, me and a few of the are worried uh, about the cars improved over the course of the season. We've had a few preliminary talks with the engine supply. Um, look, because the car needs like point one two of a star there is no point paying 1.5 mil for an additional star that would be ridiculous so let's just nope out of that one so that's a bit of a savings we've made i 
Okay, livery edit. Now I had a good look through this when we're doing it. Livery? Where is it? Here we go. Um, how did I design it? I think it was like one of these... Liveries? What? Yeah, that's the livery, livery I really like on this car. The, um, or was there something else we could have a look at? I'm just gonna, I'll put them through the paces. That could work as well, livery one. Looks too much like a Dodge Viper. Uh, what else have we got? Livery three. Yeah. There's always that. That is like the sick looking, f um, Ferrari look, eh? And what else do we have? We've got that look. I think because this sticks out more like a thin, it doesn't look really good when you mix the colors up too much. So what I might do is I might just keep it simple and just go for this red look that we've got and keep it like a Ferrari because we want to be just as fast as a Ferrari back in like the 90s. Um, is there anything else we can have a bit of a look at? No, I think that's really it, eh? We're a little bit limited with our colors given our team name. Could always do that, bit of an offset. Nah. I think the red, the full red, except for that little dot that they do. Oh, hang on. Is that one? How can one side be white but not the other side? What the hell have they done? Livery 3. Yuck. I hate non-symmetrical paint jobs. I think they look terrible. Yeah, I'm just going to do that. So it just cuts the visor around that's white. I think that looks really sick for our car. The way it's designed. So I'm happy with that livery. And we're going to be loading up with the red Ferrari. Mmm. Boom, boom. How else are we looking? Whoa. HQ visit. Um, we're interested in getting a look at you inside your HQ ahead of the new season. Our reason partners are interested in the team for writing a good article. Um, Enrique Lara's morales go down by 15, but the team markability goes down by plus 15. Now... I don't care about a morale because she's at 100%. And I've got a bonus as an extra driver to give her more morale. So let's get the markability up, even though we didn't need to add it. I'd rather add it than lose it. You know what I mean? As while we're speaking, did I end up signing a new sponsor? Now there's no sponsor to sign up just yet. Okay, so here comes the big test day. How are we going to go? Let's see where our guys come out. Is there going to be any mechanical issues? Let's hope not. Engine not delivering full power for Pardon. And we're down to like 19th and 20th. That's disgusting. What the hell is going on? So we've pretty much come last. What's going to be interesting is when this car is complete, where are we going to be sitting in that performance brand? But that is disgusting that we came so far behind. Now we are 10th. Will they give us the car stats just yet? Yes, they will. Eighth for engine. Ninth for gearing for gearbox. Ninth for brakes. Ninth for front wing. Seventh for suspension. That surprised me. And ninth for high speed corners. So performance wise, we are tenth. We are the worst team in the competition, which I kind of thought was going to be the case anyway. But, um,. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to stop this video and then make the next video into part one of season four. So let's get this boat rocking. Thanks for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button. There will be a new Motorsport Manager video every Monday to Friday. And I'll probably upload maybe two videos a day if we can get stuff rendered. And on the bridge of doing this championship. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And I'll speak to you very soon.